Welcome back to yet another garage video. Hopefully within the next couple of weeks I'm going to be able to give you something that's not a garage video and not based just on the tracer. So I went out for a ride the other day and what I noticed was it felt like when I was riding the front brakes were on. It was really odd. I had this a couple of months ago with the rear of the bike and that turned out to be the rear brake was binding a bit. But if it does feel like that, one way you can check this is when you come to a stop, get off the bike, take your gloves off and literally just gently touch the, front, uh, the brake disc. If that's really hot, then you know that the brake pads are binding, which basically all that means is the cylinders in the brake calipers aren't pushing back out. As some of you will know, some of you might not, when you pull on the brakes, all you're doing is you, you've got a cylinder in each half of the brake caliper all the backs only sometimes only have one and those cylinders push the pads out onto the disc pretty simple stuff when those cylinders get dirty or the seals go the cylinders won't push back in so it just means they they push and hold on so i did this i got off the bike checked the front disc and they felt a little bit warm they weren't too bad but i think they're just starting to bind i've got a trip coming up in the next couple of weeks and i don't want to have this happen halfway around so i bought these these are two sets of seals for the front calipers. They were like 80 quid, 80 quid. Absolute rip off. Because I'll be popping out the cylinders, I'm gonna have to bleed the brakes anyway. But I haven't changed my brake pads for a while, so what I am gonna do is I've bought myself another couple of sets of EBC scented pads, and we're gonna change those as well. So if you're interested, please join me. So before we start, there are a few things you're gonna need. Because you will be taking out the cylinders, like the brake cylinders, what you will need is some replacement brake fluid, some brake cleaner, and then for the back of the pads, just to stop squeaking, some copper grease. One other thing that will be worth doing is you use your washing up bowl as long as your other half isn't gonna kill you. I've got a drain pan, like a bike kit drain pan. I'll put it in a picture here somewhere of the one I've got. I use that for oil changes and all sorts, but it's just good to catch the brake, the, the excess brake fluid and it doesn't go all over the floor. I forgot to mention, you're gonna need some tools as well. A socket set, spanner set, pair of pliers, a torque wrench as well, just to torque up the brake bolt nuts. Let's get to it. This is the Tracer's brake caliper. First port of call is to get this off. Uh, now, one thing you must do with this, and the same thing with bleeding brakes as I've mentioned before, if you've got twin front discs, only take one off at a time. If you take both of them off and you squeeze those the levers to bring the pads out, both of them are gonna tighten up, and if you get those pads together, it's a pain in the backside to get them apart again. So do one at a time and don't rush it. There we go, put those back in there. Taking a look at this, besides it being a complete state, the pads aren't actually that bad. They've still got quite a bit of life left in them, but I'm gonna replace them anyway. First port of call is to take the brake pads out. Now the way you do that on the MT-07 and the Tracer, I'm trying to do this without bending the brake part hoses too much, um, you've got to take this plate out there are you may have to turn them there are two little clips in here pull out one there one there the pin in the middle here will come out and then that means that plate's free and you can actually get this off pair of needle nose pliers grab that there you go just small little clips do not lose those this pin that goes through the middle here can be quite difficult to get out so you can use your needle nose pliers i normally push it through a little bit with those and then just grab it from the other side sometimes it makes it easier if you push down on this plate a little bit just because it takes the pressure off the pin there we go this plate now comes off and then the brake pads should just come out like that as you can see they've actually got quite a lot of meat left in them they are very shiny though that shine can also be caused by binding calipers so when they stick on and they hold on place, it just glazes these over. Obviously I've got this down here. I'm gonna be holding this so it's not, not too bad, but you don't wanna leave it hanging like that all the time because it puts pressure on all these brake lines. So one thing I've done before, massive zip tie. Just essentially put that around there and support its weight off the bike somewhere. Hopefully you're gonna be able to see in here, but these aren't, uh, they're not awful, they're not massively filth, filthy. 
One thing to bear in mind is that you do not want to push these back in when they've got dirt on them because that can actually prematurely cut up and essentially ruin these seals. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to pop these out and then I'm going to replace the seals. If you squeeze the front brake lever, you see those? Well, one of them's coming out. <laughs> and then if you hold one of them in place, see the other one's come out. Essentially what you want to do is get all of these moving before you pull one of them out because you'll lose the pressure. The pressure is the thing that pushes them out. Do not get your fingers between these because you will crush them. But this is the one here that looks like it's not moving. I know I just said don't get your fingers in there, but you know, I've done this enough times that I know where my fingers are gonna get when my fingers are gonna get caught when they're not. Yeah, so you can see here, you can see if I if I push on one of them, the other ones come out. But the one that's not moving is this one down here. So I think that is probably one of the ones that was causing the problem. There you go. All I did there was pushed it in a little bit. Because I'm replacing the seals anyway, it's not a massive issue. Just pushed it in, which freed it up, and then that means they're now all moving. That is, that is very stiff, that one. So that, I reckon, is causing the problem. They're all now coming out slowly. Then when you get to this kind of point, you should be able to just work them out. You see they're almost all the way out now. If I literally just, just wiggle that, you get a small pop there. Get a load of fluid coming out. There you go. So that is done. All of those are out. After the left, you'll see down here that I've got four and they've been laid out in the same way they came out. The reason for that is these ones that have V6 written in them are bigger than these ones. Oh look, it says V4 in it. Always wanted a V4. So two of these are bigger than the other two. And that is placed like the big ones up here and the small ones down here. So make sure you remember which way they come out. I don't know if you can see that seal there. I'm gonna try and get I'll try and put a circle on screen now just to highlight one of them. See, what I didn't realize in this is that you have two seals per pot. You'll be able to see the big one that goes around there, but there's also one just on the edge. So you've got to take both of those out and replace both of them. Now the likelihood is the thicker one on the inside here isn't that actually the problem. It'd be this one on the outside here because this one's the one that's exposed to most of the grit and grime and everything. They're a bit of a pain to get out. I just gently pry them out with a very small flathead screwdriver. Let's get on with that. Come on. And you can see here, I don't know if you can actually see, that's actually gone down there now. So I should be able to just pop that out. There you go. So a very small seal, that's the one on the edge. And then the this is the inner seal. So I'll grab that out in a minute. So it's just, repeat that with all of these. One thing I've actually just noticed is the 80 quid I've just spent on seals for all of these is actually only giving me enough for one caliper, which is incredibly annoying. These are different size seals. Luckily enough, the ones that I have bought are the smaller seals. So I've actually only got uh, a pack for the two smaller pistons on each caliper. I thought for 80 odd quid for a load of these little seals that would be plenty, but ev evidently not. So I'm gonna replace these two. I'll check the other ones and then hopefully it's just the two little ones that are sticking on the other side as well. And then I'll replace those and then order the other ones. Down the bottom there, you'll be able to see two ridges where I've taken the old seals out. These are the old seals. So they don't look too bad. The inner ones were actually fine. But you can see these now, these are the outer seals. And you can see they're sort of okay, but they're starting to look a little bit perished. I guess it's because the bike's obviously done 36,000 miles odd. One thing I'm gonna do before I put the new seals in is I'm just gonna give this a quick blast of some brake cleaner. This worth stuff, to be fair, this is pretty decent stuff. You could almost say it's worth it. <laughs> um, <laughs> Just going to give this a spritz in here, spritz in there. I'll do these uh, these parts as well, and then I will also give the actual cylinders a once over. You can see they're not that bad, but you can see there's some dirt on them. So I'll give these a clean up because I don't want to be scratching up the new seals. I just gave it a little bit of a blast, and then I'm going to put the new seals in. 
So this is one of the new seals. One thing you are given is this. This is just some grease. So I'm gonna take a little bit and put it on each seal. It will help you put the seal in. It hopefully will increase the lifespan of the seal itself. Just being greased up will mean there's less friction on it. And then all you wanna do is pop this seal into place, bearing in mind that these are the thinner seals which go on the outside. You've got slightly thicker ones, which I'll show you here. That one's slightly th thicker, as you'll see, which is for the inside one. But yeah, just pop that in. I'm gonna use my finger from the other side. Hello from the other side. If you put one side in, then you can work the rest in. You might be able to see this seal is in the outer ring now. So I'm just gonna bust these out. A little bit of grease. Put my hand around the back, like that. Give it a reach around, find the hole, and then we're gonna pop that in. There we go. That was a nice satisfying pop. So I've done both of those now. So next port of call is to clean these. Now the reason you clean these, as I mentioned before, is because if you push this back in, all this crap on this is just gonna munch through your brand new seals. Don't be tempted to use any sandpaper or anything like that. I've just got a soft bristle brush. These might take a while to come up. You gotta think that this is obviously caked on dirt at high temperature as well. There we go. Lovely and smooth, lovely and clean. I'm gonna do that with the rest of them and I'll see you in a second. Just while I'm cleaning this, one thing that's worth mentioning is if your brakes are binding anyway and you haven't bought new seals or you've been a moron and only bought half the seals that you actually need like this guy, there is a chance that if you clean that off and clean the caliper really well, you'll get some extra life out of it. If not, solve your problem. Right, so that is all done now. My um, cylinders are all completely clean. It's just literally a case of pushing these back in. I've put a little bit of the grease back on this, but it should be as easy as just putting that in there and giving it a little push. Very, very simple. Be careful with these. You wanna make sure they're put in A, the correct places, and B, you don't wanna put these in at an angle. You might need to just work them in this is one of the new pads. Again, it's, it is quite shiny like the other one was. However, this one, it's got a rough texture to it. Obviously don't touch this if you've got greasy hands. Whereas if you compare that to the shine of the old one, you can see this one's completely glazed over and that is as smooth as anything. First port call, stick a bit of copper grease on the back to stop that god awful squeaking. Numero dos. So fitting these pads is literally just a reverse process. So that goes in here, one way. You've got two pads. One goes in like that, and then the other one goes in like that. Plenty of space between them. This pin needs to go through this hole in the caliper, through that. Then you'll see on this, in the middle there, there is a, almost like a step down. It goes through there as well. So it goes in the first bit, grabs the first hole of the brake pad. You'll have to push down on this bit to get the pin to be able to go through here. There you go. And then there you go, all the way in. That will now retain those pads in place so it won't come out. Now these pins need to go back through those holes. If you were clever, unlike me, you would have lined them up. So they're at the top. Ooh, nearly dropped that in the oily puddle of doom down the bottom. There we go. So they are both now in. New pads are fitted. Caliper seals are in place. All that's left to do is to do exactly the same on the other caliper and re-bleed the system. If you would like to know how to bleed your brakes, I'll put a link in the top, top hand corner of when I've bled these before. So there you go, pretty simple stuff, but I know Doing anything with your brakes can be quite a daunting process anyway. It looks like I'll be spending another 80 quid to buy the other seals that I didn't buy in the first place. I have bled the system now and I've done the other side and it seems to have worked and it seems to be pushing out evenly. There's no more sticky cylinders, which is always nice. So hopefully that will have solved the problem. Obviously, if you're doing this, be careful when you ride the bike for the first time afterwards anyway. Thanks for joining me. If you've got any questions, do the usual thing, stick them in the comments and I will see you in the next one.